Making the cover of Time magazine has long been a sign you're a person worth taking note of. That's exactly what happened to author Colson Whitehead, who the magazine recently called America's Storyteller. Here's our Lee Cowan with the fine print. When we caught up with acclaimed author Colson Whitehead, we found him buried beneath a mountain of his own making. His new novel, The Nickel Boys, is so highly anticipated that his publisher corralled him in a warehouse outside Baltimore for three days to have him sign some 15,000 copies, all in advance of the book's release later this week. I really love the Underground Railroad. I really enjoyed Underground Railroad. If you think that's a lot, you need only to look to his last novel, the surreal slavery epic, The Underground Railroad. He still got writer's cramp from that one. It made him the talk of the literary world. Former President Barack Obama became a fan. And so did Oprah. The Underground Railroad. How does one find out you're on the Oprah book list? Does she call you? Do you get an email? Do you... uh, she usually calls. Really? Uh, I was sort of traveling that day. My plane landed, and I saw there's a voice message from my agent. I was like, what do I do now? I'm in trouble. And she just said, Oprah. I was like, huh? Um, I didn't want to you know, curse, I was on an airplane. <laughs> and I was like, shut the front door. Uh, and, um, and that started a, a lovely journey into, into Oprah's world. That kind of attention not only landed him on the bestseller list, but earned Whitehead the National Book Award and the coveted Pulitzer Prize in Fiction in 2017. You know, after winning the Pulitzer, expectations are probably pretty high. How do you deal with that? Other people's expectations are exactly that, other people's expectations. <laughs> I try not to worry about them too much. <laughs> He's as self-deprecating an author as you'll find, despite having eight well-received books to his name. His characters range from zombies to elevator inspectors. Experimental writing, he calls it. A style born, he says, not of the classics, but something else. Did you always want to be a writer? You know, from when I was like seven or eight, I'm reading Marvel Comics, thinking it'd be cool to write Spider-Man. That'd be a cool job. You know, it's sort of overcast outside today, and this is my perfect day growing up. Um, I could just watch Twilight Zone reruns on UHF, uh, read comics, uh, science fiction, and no one's going to say, can you go outside like a real boy and <laughs> do sports or go swimming? The Underground Railroad and his newest, the Nickel Boys, stand apart, though, for their focus on race. Not so much as a history lesson, he says, but a reminder that in his almost 50 years, things have changed very little. My parents taught me that, one, I can do whatever I want in the world if I put my mind to it, and two, uh, the white world will be trying to destroy, dismantle your hopes, and possibly kill you uh, at the same time. The governor of Florida and his cabinet have given the go-ahead for researchers to begin a grim project. It was grisly news of a once segregated reform school outside Tallahassee that gave Whitehead the setting for the Nickel Boys. Dozens of bodies had been discovered on the campus in unmarked graves, many of them black boys, and the pull to write about them was hard to resist. How can this sort of atrocity continue? How many people have to turn a blind eye, and uh, the thousands and thousands of, of kids who go through it, what are their stories? The Arthur G. Dozier School for Boys, as it was called, was supposed to be a grand experiment in reform when it opened in 1900, but it soon became a house of horrors, repeatedly investigated for allegations of child neglect, abuse, and sexual assault. Although it closed in 2011, it still haunts the grounds. Rusty cots and dented desks linger, and so do the memories of its now graying survivors. It was supposed to be a reform school, but what was it? A slave camp for kids. A slave camp? Yeah. Pastor Johnny Lee Gaddy, now 73, was sent to Dozier for skipping school in 1957. It wasn't long before he got his first beating with a leather strap called Black Beauty. The strap was about four foot long. It had holes in it. And when they hit you with that belt, 
it will suck the skin from your body. The beatings, he says, always happened in this small building, known only as the White House. He hit me that first lick. I jumped up, turned the bed loose. He slapped me upside the head with the belt. He said, you don't get back down, that kid you right now. And you're 11 years old. 11. One day, when Gaddy was hauling garbage to be burned in an outdoor pit, he saw something he will never forget. I stole the stuff out there in the pit, and I saw a, a boy hands in the pit. A boy's hands? A boy hand in the pit, and I told the boy, I said, man, that's body part right there. He said, Johnny, please don't say nothing about that. Say, you can be in that too. In the end, forensic teams from the University of South Florida found more than 50 sets of remains. And this past spring, another 27 suspected graves were discovered. And who were those boys? Thought we had the story three years ago, and now a whole other chapter opens up. Whitehead never met Pastor Gaddy, but read his account and others online. And the stories so disturbed him, it was more than he could stomach to visit what's left of Dozier himself. Part of me refused to go. The only thing I could really see myself doing at the place is torching it or taking a bulldozer to it. For all the trauma he's written about, he has found happiness in his personal life. While his home is in Manhattan, his escape is the Long Island town of Sag Harbor, where he shares a home with his wife, a literary agent, and his two children. He can't stop writing. In fact, he's already about a third of the way through his next book, a crime novel set in Harlem in the 1960s. I'm very excited to read this. Colson Whitehead, prolific, perhaps, but passionate, without a question. If you could describe yourself as a writer, how would you describe yourself? I'm going to borrow a, an assessment from a friend of mine, and she said that I was the most productive, laziest person she knew. And for me, that was the greatest compliment, because I do like hanging around the house and staring off into space. And I also love having something in my life that I'm compelled to do that does give me pleasure. 